Hi everyone and welcome to the karting vlog. This is the end of January 2023 and I thought why not make a monthly vlog on karting because it's something we're going to be taking quite seriously this year. We are going to be trying to to win at least the regional uh, Western Cape DD2 Masters um, and potentially compete in the Nationals which if we win we then get to go to the grand finals. Now, in the grand finals, every single country, well, not every single country, about 60 or so different countries send representatives of people who have won their nationals, and we compete in something called the grand finals, where after a series of knockout races, there is a final where the winner takes all. Now, in these grand finals that are held by Rotax, since 2001, when they kind of started, South Africans have won it about 15 times. I think there's 15 titles. And the reason why South Africa is so successful in karting, especially in the DD2 Masters, because in order to race in the DD2 Masters, you have to be of the age 32 or above. And I just qualify because I'm going to be turning 32 in December this year. So I'm, I'm almost one of the youngest people that has ever ridden in, in DD2 Masters. Um, which is a huge advantage because children are very fast in go-karting. Like the youngsters, the teenagers, they they absolutely dominated me when I raced in the normal DD2 class last year. Um, but there is hope for me in, in the modest master's category, especially because of my age. So age, which was a big, yeah, a big weakness last year, has turned into to my greatest strength. I think my main competitor... For this year, I think he's 50. Um, I think, yeah, I think like a year ago he turned 50 or, or something. I saw it on Facebook. So hopefully age is going to come to, yeah, come to the aid. Because one of the big skills that you need in order to do karting and I guess just motor racing in general is reflexes. And your reflexes do tend to decrease with age. I think so. I think so. I don't have any scientific literature to, to back that up. Uh, so please fact check me on that. But uh, I think that's the case, that your reflexes do drop with age. But uh, yeah, it's kind of one of these things where what makes, I guess, South Africa unique is we have a really big, you know, racing culture and, and history. I mean, we had a world champion in Formula One, Jody Schechter. 19, <laughs> flip, I should know this, is it the, somewhere in the 1970s, um, I think, uh, around, yeah, roughly around there, and of course, um, when Michael Schumacher was winning so many races, uh, it was because he was driving in a car designed by Rory Burns, who was a South African. In fact, I was quite good friends with, um, I think it was his nephew or his grandson or a relative of Rory Burns. Uh, we kind of grew up in the same little town up in Johannesburg and um, we played together and, and all that. And my dad's friends were with, with Rory Burns. And of course, you know, he designed such a successful car that Schumacher would go along with Ferrari and, and dominate Formula One. So South Africa is definitely involved in, in motor racing. However, because we're so isolated geographically from the rest of the world, we've really struggled to attract any of like the big races. That's why it's like it's a big, big thing that Formula E is, is coming to our country this year. Um, but we've really struggled to get Formula One into our country because not only just yeah, geographically so, so far away, but it's kind of like, yeah, there's, there's not that many tracks in, in our country, whereas like if you're in Europe, you know, you've got all the different countries and you do the whole kind of thing, which means here in South Africa, we don't really have that many, you know, really fast classes for people to go into after karting. Like, it's kind of like you have to go international if you want to, you know, eventually get into Formula One. And what that means from a South African context is that a lot of us are staying in karting um, because karting is a lot cheaper. And like I say, South Africa, you know, our, our currency is is not the strongest currency by far. And we also got you know, quite a lot of import duties and all those type of things. So motor racing, very, very expensive. We don't have the infrastructure. We don't have a lot of the, you know, the big power series. So a lot of people do stay in karting. 
And that's what means, well, that's yeah, the result of why our DD2 Masters class for people age 32 and above tends to have a lot of racing drivers who should have moved on to more, um, you know, more powerful classes of, of normal main circuit, but instead have stayed in, in the karting arena. So it's going to be quite interesting um, because also last year I was looking at the top three drivers who, who raced last year in South Africa's Nationals. And apparently, now this is only apparent because we are only going to know this once the first National happens, which is going to be in, in March. Uh, so we'll only know then if they have or if they haven't registered. But the rumor is that the top three drivers from last year will not be competing this year. The first guy, because, well, he won the championship, it did take, you know, even though it's cheaper than main circuit, it's still a significant budget, and it's kind of like he's accomplished his life goal of becoming South Africa's national champion and competing in the grand final. Of course, he didn't do that well in the grand final. I mean, he made it to the final race, which is, of course, great, but I don't think he made it into the top 10. I think it was like 11th or 12th, which was... Disappointing from a South African's, you know, legacy, you know, like I say, we tend to win this thing. And if we had won it, then it means that more tickets would have been available, which means if you come first or second in the national, you could have gone to represent the country. But he didn't get that, which means there's only one, I think there's only going to be one ticket this year for, for DD2 Masters. Or there's, there's two. There's, so I think, you know, the past we've had up to three, it was first and second, and then we have this other ticket. It's not just for South Africans, though. That's why it's kind of, you know, karting gets a little bit confusing. But it's a vlog, so I'll explain it all to you guys here. And the idea is that there's this race called the African Open. And anyone in the whole of Africa can come to this one race. It's like 20 laps, um, you know, it's like 40 seconds a lap. So it's, it's not even that long. And Everyone comes in, it's one race, one entry, and whoever wins that race gets a wild card ticket to go to the grand finals. And the idea behind the African Open was, let's say there was an amazing driver from Botswana or Zimbabwe or one of the other African nations, but they don't have you know, the whole national and regional infrastructure that South Africa has. They can come compete, and technically, you know, even if you're in Zimbabwe or Botswana or wherever you are in Africa, you can have a shot at getting to the grand finals and winning the championship. However, and I'm stand, yeah, I should, I should probably do research before I do these vlogs, but I don't think a non-South African has ever won the South African Open. Now, the rumor is that those top three racing drivers uh, from last year will maybe compete or are more likely to compete in that one race and go forth than you know, compete in the national circuit. Because the national circuit... It, yeah, you have to race all around the country and there's quite a lot of expense when it comes to traveling and basically shipping uh, <laughs> shipping your cart across yeah, South Africa. It's quite a big country, you know, so it'll take like about 14 hours, 15 hours to drive from Cape Town all the way to, to Johannesburg. So yeah, it's not like something you can just do, you know, a two hour drive to get to the, get to the other circuit. So we were originally thinking of doing the African Open, but if the situation is that the top three drivers are not going to be racing in the national and instead are going to do that one, then it's most likely that they're going to beat us because the person who comes fourth in the nationals, he's the 50-year-old, he's also going to be racing in the regionals. And the first regional is in February. It's like in 11 days' time, very, very close. And... Basically, he is the favorite for, for the Nationals this year. He's made plans to go to all the National races, and he has represented South Africa in, in the past, and he still is incredibly fast. In fact, last year, even though he was in the DD2 Masters class and I was in the, you know, the junior class with less weight, he still beat me every single race. I only out-qualified him once, because what we do is we race with the, the juniors or the normal class, and I only out-qualified him once when I had the weight advantage. So then you might be saying, but, oh, okay, Michael, how do, you, how do you expect to win then if this guy's a lot quicker than you? And this is where this year gets very, very interesting, is due to the whole war in Russia and Ukraine, there's been a supply shortage of rubber to the Mojo tire manufacturer, which means in South Africa, 
we are getting a different tire manufacturer. It's called the, the Vega tires. And these things are very, very different. I put them on my cart earlier this year. We went out and I was slipping and sliding so much oversteer in every single corner. Absolutely crazy. And I was like, you know what? This is brilliant. This is amazing. This is basically going to be leveling the playing field. Because I've only really been driving, well, I've only been doing karting since the end of 2017. So 2018 was my first full season and then it was in the clubman's class and the senior max so i've only done dd2 you know for like two kind of years although last year was very much interrupted because i was flying all over the world um we were in denver new york istanbul south korea everything for uh for work reasons so i did miss a couple of of races which isn't great if you're trying to get points for for the championship but also, I didn't kind of take it that seriously. It was very much, you know, karting. It's just a little bit of a side hobby. I knew I was going to get destroyed by the younger guys in my class. But this year, I feel like I can kind of win. So, been going to the track almost, uh, yeah, almost, I think I've been to the track more times in January 2023 than almost I went to the track in the whole of 2022. So, we've been putting in a lot of time. And one thing that is like, we'll just behind this number four driver uh, or the person who came fourth in the nationals last year who's now the favorite just behind him is my brother they kind of very very close in pace with this guy being just a little bit faster my brother being like I say a lot faster than me as well beating me in every single race last year now my brother came well it was it was yesterday we went to to practice for the first time together and I was quite comfortably a second quicker than my brother. And of course, he needs to learn the Vega tires. He needs to get used to everything. He's been a little bit rusty. He's been to Mauritius on a holiday. He's picked up weight, which is acting against him. And he is a little bit older than me as well. And I think age is starting to factor in. So I really feel like I can take on my brother, who is the biggest competitor for the regional. And like I said, this is where karting gets a little bit weird it gets a little bit complicated because there's the guy who's going for the nationals but his plans are not to race all of the regionals in the western cape and if you don't race all the regionals the way the point structure is it's very very difficult in fact it's almost impossible to win if you unless you compete in all of them so if he's not going to be competing in all of them even if he beats us in all the races we might still beat him for the championship of the regional class simply because we attended more races and got more points that way. Which means in the regional class, my biggest competitor is my brother, um, who so far in pre-testing, I am a lot quicker. So going into the regionals, I do kind of feel a little bit like a favorite. I know that's quite an arrogant thing to, to say, but you kind of need confidence in, in motorsport. You need to have that belief in yourself you know, break as late as possible, go for the gaps if you can. So I understand, John, it is maybe a little bit arrogant calling myself favor for, for the regional, but it's, uh, it's some self-belief that I think is, is needed, is warranted. So going to be looking forward to, yeah, taking the regional crown. But the big thing is, is that we're racing now in February. And if I can win this race in February and beat the guy who came fourth last year, then, and if the, the top three are also not going to be driving uh, this year as well, then I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe the national is, is a possibility as well. So it's really, really scary because it is a possibility that I could make it to, you know, the grand finals at the end of this year, represent South Africa, which, like I said, historically is a favorite, has dominated this class. So you know, we'll go in there and, and hopefully be, be at the top of the, the timesheets. There is a British driver at the moment, though, in DD2 Masters, who, who is on fire, who is amazing. So if he's going to be racing, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to, to beat him. But you never know what his life plan is, what's going to happen, whether he will compete as well. And I think that's the nice thing about DD2 Masters is... It's not as professional as the youngsters. So the youngsters kind of, this is their entire life. This is what they do. This is what they dedicate their time to be because, you know, there is the dream of becoming a Formula One driver. There's so much 
more you know, on the horizon. Whereas DD2 Masters, we're all 32 or older. This is it. This is the pinnacle of the sport. Um, we, you know, there's, there's nothing more beyond this. So for us, you know, karting is, it is a hobby at the end of the day. And I'm actually going to try and do that as well, is make a, maybe make a vlog for my actuarial career, um, which is, you know, what I do for, on a day-to-day -day basis to, to hopefully bring home a salary to afford to do karting as well as my, my other hobby, which really fascinating me at the moment, which is philosophy. I mean, getting into some philosophical discussions and, and all those kinds of things. And um, yeah, so karting, and for those of you who know me, I'm also black, big into Pokemon, big into chairs, big into, you know, traveling. So there's all these other things, but karting I'm trying to make as the, the focus for 2023, because it's kind of like, this one, there's a ticking time bomb. You know, at least chess, you can improve with age. Pokemon, your collection accumulates in time. Karting, my, I've reached that age where I know my body clock is, is against me. And also, I do karting with my dad. So my dad is like my, my chief mechanic, uh, my main helper, my, my manager. It also helps sponsor financially, you know, just assist on the, in that front as well. Um, and the whole thing is that job. My dad's also getting quite old, so... I want to go in this year and almost win it for him. You know, that's that's also part of the, the motivation. It's like, why are you doing this? Like, we're not doing it for, for the plastic trophy um, or, you know, the, the recognition. Because like I said, there's nothing after DD2 Masters. It's like, well, what's the point of winning? Why do you want to do it? And that main reason is it's to win for my dad. So my dad has a huge, huge um, history in, in motor racing. I mean, he even had, a, I mean, back in a house in Johannesburg, uh, he had this little picture of him standing with Nelson Mandela and Bernie Ecclestone in the early 2000s, trying to get Formula One into South Africa. And unfortunately, that fell apart because of the RAND, the South African currency, deteriorating. And of course, I've now studied actuarial science. I was like, Dad, currency risk. You should have, you know, managed that with some sort of derivative. Uh, you know, you could have short the RAND. So when the RAND falls, you know, you have enough funding to, to keep going with it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting how a lot of your financial risks aren't really addressed when it comes to day-to-day -day operations, well, especially back then, even on such a big project as getting Formula One in. But anyway, yeah, my dad... He used to race when he was younger. Um, he absolutely loves Formula One. And we've always watched it from, yeah, since I was an absolute child, been watching Formula One, learning all about it. And it was crazy because as a kid, I would watch Formula One and be like, you know what, I can do this. I can, like, I would watch Formula One and be like, this is so easy. Why are these guys paid so much? Why are they celebrate so much? All they're doing is turning a little wheel, pushing an accelerator, hitting a brake, like, this is so easy, I can do it. And then after doing karting and realizing how difficult and demanding and technical karting is, and then seeing Formula One and realizing that it's like a million times more intense, I will now watch Formula One and I'm like, this is insane. How do these people do what they're doing? This is absolutely incredible. It's astonishing. And I now have got absolutely no faith in ever being able to to drive a formula one car it's one of those things where i'm just like this this will never never happen um even though like in a weird and i know this is a little bit off topic you know like in a weird sense i kind of owned a formula one car for for like when did we get them 20 2015 and now we're we're selling them now but yeah for the past what's that couple of years um We've had some Formula One cars in our possession. So what happened was there was the A1 GP series, which was this idea that they wanted to make a World Cup of motor racing where every country got their, their own like Formula One car. And when they started out, they weren't really Formula Ones. They were some Lotus, I think a Lotus or some sort of single seater uh, formula. And it was a lot of fun. It was really cool. You know, it was slowly sort of starting to pick up. And then in early 2007, they upgraded the cars to Ferrari Formula One cars based on the F, I think it was the 2004, which was the one that Burn, uh, Rory Burns made, Schumacher dominated in. So they made 20 of these Ferrari Formula One cars. 
for the A1 GP. It was going to be like the World Cup of motorsport. And then just like seven races later, there was that whole financial crisis, which is weird because that whole financial crisis would be the reason why the actuaries would develop, you know, enterprise risk management and the chartered enterprise risk actuary um, role, which is the professional body that I now belong to. So it's weird how that financial crisis was very prevalent in my life because not only did it create the profession that I would later go into, but it also caused Northern Rock and a lot of other financial backers to withdraw from A1GP and the whole series kind of collapsed and the delivery company took a lien on it. My dad, being a lawyer, tracked the whole uh, court case. He did a bit of, of funding and you know we kind of made like a little company that my family went in with myself my brother and my dad we went in as you know one of the one of the owners of this new company that purchased these these cars um and then we got there in 2015 uh the problem is they came without any of like the steering wheels or the electronics which turned out to be a very very important and expensive piece of the puzzle and then also the sponsor that was going to to support this whole thing, the CEO of that company unfortunately had a stroke and the interim CEO was like, whoa, this is quite a big project. Uh, I don't want to kind of do it under my, under my watch, you know, let's rather do some less risky things. And ultimately, you know, these Formula One cars kind of turned into a bit of a white elephant, but we're slowly selling them off and, you know, shame has caused my dad a fair, fair amount of, of stress, as you can imagine. But it has been a childhood dream of his, you know, to kind of you can see he's so passionate about, about racing. He wanted to start, well, the whole idea behind that was to start a racing school in South Africa. So in Formula One, one of the things is that people just don't get enough experience because to, uh, testing is limited to try and you know keep the cost quite low. I mean, here we're spending like 4,000 Rand, which is about $300, $250 on a set of tires. And that's for little go-kart wheels. So you can imagine how expensive it's going to be for, uh, for a Formula One car. Um, you know, the more testing you do, the more tires you burn, the more wear you have on all the components. So to try and limit that Formula One kind of like limited testing, but that means that the, the new drivers are at such a disadvantage to the old drivers. And that's why we're seeing guys like Lewis Hamilton, Alonso. Okay, Vettel's just recently retired now. But it's why those drivers that are really old are still so competitive because in the past, like I say, age normally takes away your reflexes, but in Formula One, because the youngsters didn't have enough time to get enough experience, the older guy's experience was able to dominate that, that youth. And the whole thing with this A1 GP, which we renamed Afrix, um, was going to address that by allowing people to test the car here in South Africa, get that seat time under their belt so that when they do go to Formula One, they knew how to operate, you know, such a complex and extremely fast car. Now, there actually are videos on YouTube. So you can actually type in Afrix. Um, you can go check them out there on like my brother's YouTube channel. He's also posting videos of, of his karting. Um, and hopefully this year we're going to coordinate our GoPros together so we can kind of have a seamless race. Also in our, our team this year, we were making, um, I guess, a change. So last year we had Jill was part of our team. Uh, Jill, really big into cars, uh, worked at, at Porsche. He's a Porsche salesman. In fact, he was the, the salesman who I bought my, my two GT4s from. Um, I remember walking in one day and looking at the, we were taking my sister-in-law's Porsche in for, for a service, my dad and I. I was looking at this Cayman uh, GTS and my dad you know, knows so much about cars. He's like, no, this car's wrong because of this, 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 this and that. And the salesman over here is my dad saying this. He says, well, you know, we've just got these two cars that have come in. We haven't even put them on the floor. Haven't even like kind of put them on the system yet. They've literally just come in. Do you want to go to the back and check them out? And there were these two, you know, GT4s. Remember, they were like covered in dust and everything like that. And my dad was like just singing the praise, telling me, oh, Michael, this is the best car ever. You know, it's this, it's that, you know, going on and on and on. And so I just said to the salesman, okay, cool, I'll take... I'll take both because I remember when they came out in 2016, they were my brother's like favorite car. My brother absolutely loved these things and he couldn't get one because it was a limited like design. So they kind of said like, okay, you know, 
only Porsche's preferred customers kind of got these things. I think only 33 came into the country. That's, that's what I heard. Of course, you know, like I say, take every, every factual statement in this with a pinch of salt. We're not, uh, we're not fact checking it. Um, but apparently only, yeah, only a 33 of the nine, yeah, the nine, is it the 918? 718, I don't know, I get really confused with the Porsche numbers. It's the 2016 one. It's the 2016 one. I think it's the 986. It's 9 something something. Um, anyway, only 33 apparently came into the country. And two of them were just sitting there. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take both. I told my brother, which color do you want? He took the black one. And I'll drive the, the silver one. And um, I remember then taking it on the track at, uh, at Kilani Main Circuit, you know, where we do karting. We went to the main circuit with this thing. And oh my gosh, it was it was insane. In fact, if I didn't do karting, in fact, if you don't do karting or a form of motor racing, you should not drive the GT4. It's, a, it's an absolute insane beast. Really, really incredible piece of, of equipment. Um, absolutely love it. But uh, we're going completely off topic. Coming back. So after we bought these, these GT4s, um, Jill, the salesman, was like, oh, what do you guys do? And we told him about karting. And I remember, he came out to karting and he was helping me out with karting. I was like, wow, check it, Porsche's customer service. Like, the salesman is now helping me with, with my kart. And he saw all the motor racing and he's like, you know what? I want in. I want to be part of your guys' team. So we all kind of had the same sticker kit. This is in 2021. Uh, Jill joined the team. And, um, you know, it was like my first year in, in DD2. We went out, I was driving a CRG at the time, absolutely hated that thing, hate CRG, I'm now on Burl, much prefer that, these are the different karting chassis that you can get, both are Italian, um, and yeah, so we went out in these blue sticker kits that I kind of designed, it was a lot of fun, and yeah, it was really, I was getting worried because Jill, Jill reminded me so much of like Charles Leclerc, he just had that same vibe to him, and Jill was just getting quicker and quicker and quicker, and towards the end of last year, Jill was, you know, there were quite a few races where he was, he was in front of me. I don't think he ever, he ever beat me because shame, he always, always plagued with reliability issues, all these type of things. He had a slightly older car to, to us um, that was always giving him, him problems. But yeah, Jill has now stepped out of karting for 2023. And we've got a new racing driver who's joined us. Who has the same name as my dad, which does make it a little bit confusing when we refer to him. It's like, are you talking about your dad or are you talking about your, your teammate? And absolutely love this guy's passion, love his enthusiasm. Also, was quicker than him last year, but he's uh, at the track even more often than, than me. And he's closing in and we're almost like, yeah, almost on the same, same kind of time. So there's my brother and him um that we have to worry about for for the regional thing although it's weird like i said i want to win this thing for for my dad and the fact that the three of us will all be driving under the same colors under my dad's ownership if one of the three of us win i'm going to come to yeah count it as as a victory because it's like okay cool we accomplished what we wanted to do for for my dad so really am trying to go in with that that team mindset Although once the, the visor goes down, you do tend to become a lot more selfish and, you know, you want to win for yourself. But I keep telling myself, you know what, let's try win as a team. So he's actually coming tomorrow uh, to my place to play on the, the simulator. And I think I'll maybe, maybe end off on this. So we've got a karting simulator. We've got the actual track that we race here in Cape Town lasered in. And we can sit in a simulator in my living room and we can actually go through the circuit and do all that. In fact, we're going to be racing on the 7th of February, um, a karting race. But it's, it is very different. It's a, a very different experience. And we're a lot slower on the simulator, on the virtual game, than we are in reality. But he's going to come over tomorrow. We're going to try that out. And so that's yeah, a little bit of an update to, to the team structure. But sure, I think um, I've been going on for, for 30 minutes, so let me maybe wrap up this, this vlog for January and basically just say, yeah, we're going out, we want to be competitive this year, we're, we're racing to win, which is the first time since Clubman. So Clubman's my brother and I, we, there was the final year, my brother won, I came, I came second in it, um, but this is like the first time in like a professional class 
that we're actually competitive, we're going for the title, and that makes it really, really exciting. I'm also thinking of maybe making some cool little you know, NFTs and airdropping them to people for free, just you know, for a fun thing to commensurate the whole thing, which of course they should maybe have a little bit of value if we do ever become world champion. Um, but I'll talk about that and the karting and everything else. Gonna, like I said, try to do a monthly vlog, uh, keep you guys updated with what's happening with me on my hobby around karting, which I know <laughs> this is a channel, this is an actuarial channel. You come to watch tutorials on, on how to do math problems, not to, not to see what this kid does in his spare time. But I thought, you know what, it'll be a fun video for me to watch, uh, you know, when I'm a lot older, look back upon. So I guess at the end of the day, you know, these vlogs, the primary audience for these vlogs is, is my future self. Um, but with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to say whatever you want in the comments down below and I'll get back to you at the end of February.